I do feel better though. Good, good. I do feel better though. Hello, everybody. Good, good. I do feel better though. Hello, feel better. Hello, YouTube. One second. Hello. I heard an echo there. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, yes, yep. Here we go. Echo, echo. Yes, it wasn't even close, Phil. It was never, never. No contest. Yes, I do. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the... I got some DMs, too, from people. Like, thank you for all the DMs. Oh, wow. How oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I let them know you were that's a little under nice. the weather. So that's that's nice to hear. All right. Uh, well... Do not eat, like... Do not eat, like, a pig for 30 years, people. Yeah. It's not good for you. Since, <laughs> since Jeff's not here, we can start on time. Oh, Wait, why? Yeah, we always start, like, within a minute or two of 8 o'clock when it's just us. Weird how it works. <laughs> All right, I'm going to play the intro. You won't hear it, but you'll hear me bring us in. Okay. Sounds good. Here yeah, we go, everyone. Calm down, though. Okay. Five, four, three. the internet you're busy let's do this welcome to the game mess decides podcast this is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you don't have to think for yourself i'm your host mike minotti and with me is sean turbo sean mcdowell in today's episode fallout 4 is big in europe and and probably other places and we're picking (laughs) the mount rushmore of furries I mean, Sega really? games. I mean, well, maybe yeah. both. Maybe both. Don't get, don't get too oh. excited, Sean. Uh, mm, okay, okay. Back burner. Back burner. Yeah. Uh, hey, yeah. Jeff's still uh, busy with the kids. Uh, so uh, we are going grubless today. That's okay, though, because I got Sean with me. How's it going, Sean? Oh, it's going good, Mike. Uh, it's, you know, we're getting to the end of the week, and I'm tired because that's the tired. way things go nowadays. I'm very tired. You I was... heard me punching the shit out of Mike during the intro? Sorry. Punching? No. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm tired. Um, I've been on... It, I was just kind of like in this computer chair a lot today, but that's okay. Got some time to walk around outside, make some food. Enjoy that record player that Grub got me. Did I, did I tell you about the record player? I don't no, know. I don't. I don't think I know about the record player. What's up with that? Right, uh, Jeff got me a, a kind of late birthday Christmas present. And it's a record player, which is I've never had one before. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's really it's 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 a very it's very nice. And now I'm into collecting vinyl, which for me is like a couple Ooh. real albums and then video game soundtracks. Uh, I I have uh, Streets of Rage two and nice. uh symphony of the night as kind Very of highlights nice. on the collection but it's great i love just kind of throwing those on and then going about whatever i'm doing in the kitchen it's uh it's actually been nice i get the appeal i get it yeah is do you notice a sound quality difference or is it more sort of just like the the whole uh process of setting it up and everything i, I mean it sounds really good i also did get like nice speakers for it uh, it's such a it's okay, such a nice okay. turntable it doesn't even have like its own speakers like i had to get some <laughs> like and it does bluetooth but i got like the wired ones right so oh, okay sure. But i mean yeah. you know I, i'm not enough of like a sound snob to really be like yes this is definitely the clearest it sounds very nice i mean i'm used to just like mm-hmm. playing music off of my phone and carrying it around me so yeah it sounds right. a lot better than that absolutely nice. cool yeah i used to have a setup like that myself but it just uh, through some moves, it kind of got to be high maintenance, and I just ended up yeah giving away. But uh, I kind of want to get a setup like that again because I do. I don't have many, but I do have a couple vinyls. Uh, I have both of the Mega Man Legends vinyls that um, nice. Ship to Shore did, which actually you know that's that's a little thing we can talk about real quick. Ship to Shore, do you know about this company, Mm-mm. Mike? At all? They Not at all. did. They did a whole bunch of uh, video game vinyls. You know, you get them from a variety of places. They were one of the big ones. I think they also like produced them for other companies, like some of the Yeti ones that they have. They okay. got from them, I believe. Uh, they actually closed down over the past week. So oh, that's, that's a bit of a bummer. I don't know what that says about the state of video game vinyl necessarily. Right. But, well, because yeah. like, because they, I am eight bit does them, I think, and limited yeah. run. Uh, Mondo used to. I know Mondo had a lot of cutbacks at oh, some yeah, point. Mondo I don't know if Mondo. I don't know if Mondo Jap- still Japanese, does. Japanese game developers do vinyls, I think. Yeah, because uh, yeah, yeah, their soundtracks are big, so that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, 
I don't know. Uh, either either way, just collecting, yeah, collecting vinyl can be cool because it's also a display piece in addition to being functional. So I, I get, I get the appeal. Oh, Christian punched his microphone. I thought he's like, microphone. I was punch- I don't know why I thought you meant you were punching me. I was like, what do you mean? You were like, 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 no, like no. figuratively punching I, me? Yeah, I thought it was I a bit like we were holding mic down and no. I what I, I, what I do? Microphone. He turned on and everything. No, okay. there you go. Okay. Okay. Turn it off. I need to touch it in a specific place on the top. But I just I punch it in the middle and turn on. It was like shit, <laughs> and then I couldn't turn it off again. It was like, oh fuck, this shit is broken. But okay. I thought I thought that came through. All right, Grub has like a whole bullet points worth of other things that he says here. Uh, to get more from Sean and me, you can join our Discord <laughs> at GameS.net. Give us a good rating wherever you are listening, and hit that like button on YouTube, please. If you want to ask a question, you can drop a super chat during the show on YouTube. Thanks to Carlos Ayan, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube for the use of our theme song. Thanks to One Up Versus CPU for our artwork. You can find more at One Up Versus CPU.com. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever pods are caught. Thank you to the mods. You can support us by going to patreon.com slash gamest. That gets you access to uh, private channels, monthly Q&A, participation in the game club discussions, our Jeopardy episodes, Columbros, and uh, other fun things. All right. Let's get into uh, some of the news that's going on here. First thing, Fallout 4 is uh, the best-selling game in Europe right now and kind of all over the place. Fallout games have seen a giant surge in players. This is, of course, because of that new Fallout TV show. That is, It's on Amazon, right? Uh, yes, Amazon Prime. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Fallout just doing very well. The show seems to be universally very well liked have you been feeling the fallout itch at all yourself sean nah because i'm not a huge fallout guy i'm kind of just not big uh well <laughs> i was gonna say bethesda rpg guy i'm not a big western rpg guy uh broadly speaking but uh like i've mentioned on content elsewhere i did really like new vegas i kind of got the itch to go back to that you know uh jeff was playing it more at the day job today and i was like uh, it's been a long time. It's been since like that game released, Mike. I did a uh, pass the controller playthrough with a friend way back when. Uh, well, it would have been roughly high school. Yeah, it should have been high school when we did that when it first came out. That was just a good time. So I am kind of thinking of going back to one of the games. But uh, the show itself, I don't know. Not, nothing about what I'm hearing does it for me, really. Uh, how about you? Have you watched it at all? No, or? but I want to. And that's saying a lot for me because I don't watch anything. <laughs> I don't watch okay, any TV yeah. shows. So the oh, yeah, fact- and you, as as you know, I'm the same way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the fact that I want to watch I, it is is a big deal. I um, you know, even though Fallout Four is the one getting like the patch, right? And it's mm-hmm. the newer game. New Vegas is the one I want to go back to. I didn't get to watch yeah. much of Grub playing it. Did he have a good time? Uh, from what I heard, yeah, I had on the background because I was taking care of some other stuff today. But seemed, yeah, it seemed like you enjoyed it. it, it I- I saw that he did vanilla after all. He said he was going to do it with mods. I think he did with minor mods okay. is what is what happened. Cause I we, tried to we talk him a, out of it. I don't know if I had any any sway over him or not or what. Yeah, we, we have a thing going on where we're uh, getting some footage of modded Fallout. So I think he did like minor mods. Oh, I see. Oh, oh mods- someone, someone said mods were crashing. So oh, yeah, no, he was. So he didn't listen to me. It's just that it was impossible to do it with them. Okay, got it, got it. All right. right. Well, yeah. So, okay. yeah, he also puts like 100 mods in that. Like, right. He puts, uh, uh, yeah, an obscene amount of mods. Yeah, he's going to crash. More mods. Sure. Yeah. The better. I forget where you are on the whole the mod thing, uh, Sean. Uh, I'm. I like functional mods. Um, I mentioned well when we were talking on the bombcast this week, last week, whatever it was. Uh, something like Starfield not having DLSS support at sure. launch, but it did have FSR, and there was a mod to add in DLSS in place of FSR. That's the kind of thing that I like, or you know, a mod that will. Um, if the if the frame rate is capped and then you can uh, install a mod that uncaps it uh, without breaking anything, like it'll be a mod to fix the physics when you uncap the frame rate. Stuff like that, I'm really into. But when it comes to, yeah, like the silly stuff, like putting um, Nick Cage <laughs> Macho the Man moon. in yeah. or, whatever, or Nick Cage as the moon. Yeah, that's yeah. that's not really my the jam. T- the, I'm yeah, like the, you. I would just watch on YouTube. Yeah, the TikTok to, content like. mods. I'm like, that's OK. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. You know, I don't. You know, I don't want. I don't mean to be like some big grump about it, but it doesn't. It just doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, yeah. For me. Um, yeah. I did. I did play Fallout seventy six though. I went back and checked that out. I haven't played right. that since launch. And like, and everyone says that game's like pretty good now. And yeah, it's pretty good now. It's basically just okay. a Fallout game. Like all MMOs, it struggles like really 
figuring out what it means to be an MMO. It's like, yeah, there's other people around. Mm -hmm. You can <laughs> do stuff with them, I guess. But like, aside from like end game content, there's usually very little reason to do anything with them. But mm -hmm. just the idea of like playing this Fallout game set in West Virginia, which is um, a really nice and a very different setting yeah. for these things, right? So uh, I was enjoying that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll jump in a little bit. Part of me is still like, if I really want to play a Fallout, though, I really want to play one of those super single player crafted ones instead of one where you know it's like, hey, go build your base. I don't want to build a base. I really there's nothing. I can't yeah, stress enough how little. I want to build a base in Fallout. Yeah, something about that building. I don't know. And like in Starfield, I know I know yeah. we're talking about uh, Fallout, but in Starfield, man, that was just so boring. And it is. When I talked to the people who are more familiar with you know their games. I was like, what? What's the point of building in Starfield to to get more stuff to build? I'm like, okay, that, that's got it. it. Yeah. Weird. It, well, it's like what was it in Fallout? And they're like, oh, okay, well, in Fallout, it actually makes sense because you can sort of have like a little home base type of thing. And okay, that makes that makes a bit more sense. I can see why people would like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, uh, you know, of course, we're getting a lot more of these media adaptations of video games. The success of yeah. Fallout is only going to make that go further. You know, there's there's that new Golden Axe show announced by the people who do uh, Star Trek Lower Decks. Yeah. And it's funny because, like, you, you know, you think, like, like, the thing with Fallout is that, okay, it's great that those people are playing Fallout, but mm -hmm. these games are very cheap. They're on sale. It's, of course, throwing some money at Bethesda. It's not yeah, the same... Because, um if you if you have Amazon Prime, which if you're watching the show, I assume you do. Uh, 76 is free through Prime. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it still is, but at least it was. But it's not the same as like if they had Fallout 5 out right now and it was 70 dollars. Um, at least yeah. if Golden Axe, if for some reason that show really hits, which would <laughs> you know I can't imagine it would hit as well. There is a new Golden Axe game coming out, right? That is right, one of those yeah. Sega ones happening. So the synergy is there. So it's uh, I know obviously a Fallout game is huge and hard to make. It does feel like, uh, well, you, I think you were mentioning it the other day. It feels weird that there's not a lot of synergy between some of these adaptations that are coming out. Yeah. Because when they hit, they hit hard. And you get stuff like um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners just absolutely making everyone lose their minds over Cyberpunk. Which, by the way, have, have you seen Edge Runners? No, I heard good things. But that Ooh. to me, that it seemed to me like that was the start yeah. of like the goodwill finally coming to Cyberpunk. Yeah, Punk, it like turned cyberpunk around. That's kind how of good did. like the well, show is, is people were like, oh, this is good, actually, even if it was, you know, cyberpunk was still messy at that point. But people had almost like convinced themselves because of how good the show was that the game was good, too, which, by the way, by the way, Edge Runners is by my favorite anime studio as well. I, I can't recommend it enough. If anyone hasn't seen it, including yourself, I, mm. I recommend checking it out at some point. It's worth a watch. But yeah, it's like that friend. and. Uh, what else has there been? There was a, oh yeah, The Witcher. I was, I was saying The Witcher, like CD Which, Projekt seems to have this figured out, right? Yeah. Well, it was The Witcher's last season is coming up. That show did have a big, like, uh, turnaround for the worse at a certain point. Everyone loved season one and then it was just kind of downhill. But, yeah. What's up? What's Don't up, Christian? about The Last of Us. Yeah, Last, Last of, of Us. Us, yep, of course, also, that yeah, was big. Some synergy there because it was what part one. Was yeah, they had that remake out? come out, and I mean, yeah. also you know, part you know, Last of Us Two is still out there for people to get. But you know, Twist Twisted Metal gets brought up. If you really like the Twisted Metal show, there's really was nothing for you to go buy. There was nothing no. to go buy. Like the PS, yeah. you're gonna buy the PS3 version or P Twisted Metal Two Classic. Uh, no. Yeah, I I think like black is on one of the tiers of PS plus or right. something it's like that. Not, yeah, there's not almost nearly nothing. the same. Right. Yeah. So it's just really weird that they would put out that adaptation with nothing to go with it. I, I don't know. Well, no. I mean, they were trying, it sounds like, but video game development is just so hard. It's like uh, nothing came right. of it. <laughs> like nothing happened. Nothing got off the ground. Uh, so what we really need is a Mega Man legend show. And then we'll maybe actually get Mega Man. Legends, so. <laughs> I can no get one talks us. about Halo though. No, yeah, because no one likes the, the show, show, right? Like, yeah, so that's a lot of the people thing. did not like it's, Halo. It's weird. People is like lukewarm into uh, about that show. They're like, yeah, it's okay. And fans of Halo hate the shit out of that show. Right. So but like, yeah, like people, like, and then it gets renewed all the time. Like, well, because for Paramount Plus, I'm sure it still does well, at least for now. But yeah. that's the thing. Your show has to be pretty well liked in order for it to actually have an impact. Because oh, yeah, yeah, the Halo show didn't yeah. do anything for Halo Infinite, even though like in that case there was a new game people could have jumped into, just didn't yeah. really work out. Okay, uh, next thing here, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 was announced by Warhorse Studios. Uh, they claim it will be twice as big as the original. Did you ever play Kingdom Come Deliverance? Because I just, I I never did. I mean, you're I, not a Western RPG guy, so. 
Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll be honest, Mike. I had to just Google it just now. This, and, this uh, was the one people got upset about because it. Uh, it he, I don't know. There was weird vibes, or there's something about. Was this? Was this the? Was it, wives. Well, Final the Fantasy 16 did this as well. Was yeah, this it was one, one of those. They yeah. were like, no, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. No minorities for historical accuracy thing, which. Yeah. Like what? What? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, I think they even said like this time that won't be the case because of like the different scope. So, so whatever. I never played Kingdom Come Deliverance. I'd, I'd have to. I, see... Looking at it now, I, I've seen someone play a little bit of it, and they, uh, I'll be honest, seemed unimpressed. So I don't know. I mean, it's 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 like a real realistic one, right? It's like very medieval. I don't think there's even a smidge sure. of fantasy. It's just straight up medieval uh, stuff. Uh, so, oh, gotcha. like my interest in like hmm. that kind of um. You know, real dirty. You can like smell the bo off of the like medieval knights kind of fantasy. Not really exactly uh, my kind of thing. But yeah, I remember you saying you you didn't love the at least aesthetics of Dragon's Dogma too for the same exactly. Reason. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just not really my thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like right. I don't know what I know. I I just keep calling it dirt fantasy. Or but again, fantasy <laughs> not really the order of the day. But you know, there is still a market for these games. The the first game. Didn't get good reviews, but a lot of people played it. It found a surprisingly good audience, and I think this one can slot in pretty nicely still. There is still a big hankering for these big kind of Western RPGs, and there are only so many of them that do come out. So I wouldn't be shocked if this is a hit. Uh, speaking of RPG hits, though, Larian confirms it's working on two new projects. They say what we're working on now will be our best work ever, uh, you know, I guess it's nice that they're not like, yeah, we're phoning it in after that <laughs> success of Borders Gate 3. <laughs> um, I bet one of these is Divinity Original Sin 3 or some kind of Divinity thing, and then the other one is maybe something new. Does that sound right to you, Sean? That does sound right to me, yeah. Because they, you know, if you have your own original series that can be doing some of the same things with your last big hit but you aren't tied down by a license and having to deal with the license holder that is in not a great place right now. <laughs> it makes sense. You, you know, you, you go for it, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, um, meanwhile, the Dungeon Dragons people, Hasbro, right? Uh, they're like, oh, we're going to get somebody else to make Boulder's Gate. And it's like, yeah. man, good luck, because I just huh. don't know, like, like who? Yeah. Like, Obsidian was maybe the other people who could do it. And, right. uh, like, I don't, I, I don't think you're going to be able to book them. <laughs> so... Like there, there are a lot of studios that do make these these Western RPGs, and hey, Larian, like you know, the scope of it, the first original sin was small, and then they grew up from there to the point where they could do a Baldur's Gate three. So maybe somebody else can scale up like this. It's just I just don't know exactly who. And the problem is expectations are now very high for whatever you're gonna do with Baldur's Gate going forward and as soon as see people see something they don't like or doesn't feel right they're just going to immediately blame it on the fact that it's not larian yeah definitely yeah. especially if they change something about it from just being a traditional uh crpg or whatever right and they can't change yeah much. and if people is like concerned about that like the the old divinity games they're not uh, D, D based on the rules but mm -hmm. the rules are very they're close alike yeah, they're pretty close. I don't think they're going to lose that that cool vibe mm -hmm. of, like, tabletop feeling, you know? Okay. Yeah. I wonder what they'll do. I was shocked when I was, like, just kind of reading comments on, like, Reddit about what they might be doing. People were like, I hope they do something that's a bit darker than Divinity. Mm -hmm. Divinity is too, like, cartoony for me. I was like, isn't everything else already darker fantasy? Like, oh, we need yeah. everything. Everything's got to be, like, The Witcher and fucking uh, Game of Thrones now, I guess. Whatever. To, to me, and like, I Baldur's think, Gate already kind of was that. I guess Baldur's Gate is too yeah. colorful and fanciful for people. Also, I don't know. It can be, yeah. It I, can. I don't know. People, yeah, are sometimes a little too edgelordy. They want their dark fantasy, which, yeah, you know, if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. Totally cool. But I, I honestly want to see what Larian would do in an entirely different setting in general. If the setting's I not would... just sci-fi, okay? Like, when, when I say I want people <laughs> who make fantasy games to do something new, I don't mean I want them to do sci-fi. And it's the same. If you make sci-fi games, like, don't just make fantasy as your next thing. Right. right, yeah. I will say, though, with Larian specifically, I actually kind of would be down if they wanted to try yeah, their I guess I wouldn't something hate like it. Shadow Run specifically? Sure. I don't think... 
yeah, but I, I don't think they're going to work with any other IP now. I think they. Are. I don't think they will. But yeah. just something in the vein of that, where it is, you know, fantasy mixed with technology. Maybe sure. Do something like steampunk or something as well, which you know, again, along the vein of Shadowrun, there's a little steampunky in there, mixed with the fantasy and the tech. Wait, but just something different. We used to have steampunk overload in gaming, and now it feels like people have backed off from that enough that I'd be fine seeing it again. I could Remember go for all those Shadow Runner games? Yeah, mm-hmm. they like, had a ton back in the, in the day. World? And yeah. then they had the uh, the Xbox shooter and everything. I just remember though, what is the s- someone to help us out here if Mike can't remember that Xbox steampunk game? Yeah, the clockwork like something something. Yeah, yeah, that, whatever yeah. that is. What yeah. we're That's in Exile, that? which would have been a good contender. That is game. Okay. That, uh, an Exile would have been a good contender to maybe step into Baldur's Gate, but again, they're with Microsoft now. They're gonna do what Microsoft right. tells them. Uh, to do yeah that was like one of like three games coming out soon that look like bioshock including like the actual ken levine game and apparently right. also an actual bioshock clockwork uh, revolution is the name thank you cody yeah thank you thank you yeah that one i don't remember looking at it didn't do necessarily a ton it's so funny because i love bioshock like one a lot it was when i played it the first time i loved it and now every time i see something that's clearly aping it i kind of roll my eyes a little bit for some <laughs> reason i was like how oh, original um but you know, even their own games are like that. Even like Bioshock, like three Infinite. Or oh like sure, well Bioshock Infinite like, yeah, immediately yeah. got readdressed. Yeah. Uh, okay, next thing here, uh, Pokemon Go has new avatars and they're ugly and everyone's they real sure mad. Are. And at first, they I want to sure be are. like, "Oh, what are people overreacting about now?" And then I go and look at them. I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" They actually are kind of ugly. They're hideous. What they do? I don't know what they did, Mike. This is yet another example of uh, Niantic just not knowing what the hell they're doing, seemingly. It is weird. It's an unnecessary change. Um, they, they're they doing a lot with like the, the graphics in the game in general. Right. Uh, for example, if you, uh, if you go to catch a Pokemon in Pokemon Go and you don't have AR turned on, it'll just be a static background right. of something relatively similar to where you are. Usually it's like a grassy background. Sometimes there'll be snow if it's snowing or something like that. And they've updated all of those and they're doing some of that stuff. Uh, the lighting is a little bit different, but they also, yeah, like overhauled the way avatars look. And I don't, nobody seems to know why. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's weird. Um, it's a risky thing. Even if Final Fantasy XIV, its next expansion, Dawn Trail, it's getting like this graphical overhaul. Everyone's like really excited. And now some people yeah. are seeing like how their characters look in the graphical overhaul, which you can do with the benchmark test. And mm-hmm. some people are like, I don't know, it looks different. Yeah. I don't really like it. Yes, yeah. yes, true. But also, you know what's genius about Final Fantasy XIV? They're going to give you one free, uh, like... Fantasia, which lets, character, you, like, yeah. which lets you change the look of your character. So, well, They're like, yeah, we good. understand, and we're going to give you that item that costs, like, 10 bucks. We're going to give you yeah. for free because we are updating this. That's yeah, nice. so what's going on at 14? Not a huge deal. It's more of a curiosity, but this Pokemon thing is... Uh, that's uh, bizarre. I don't know what they're going... Niantic is, is, is such a weird company because they had that giant, giant, yeah. giant hit. And it's been to do well, but then everything else that they have tried since then... It's just nothing's going to hit. Nothing is ever going to match that game concept better than Pokemon. Nothing else yeah. will ever make as much sense for that. And like like I mentioned a little bit, they've made so many odd decisions over the years uh, that just piss off the player base. Like um, when they rolled back the restrictions on remote rating. This is a very specific thing. I'll try to keep it simple, uh, not oh, right. getting too into the weeds. But uh, when... Uh, covid happened when we were all in lockdown they changed their that was the uh, yeah i believe the introduction actually of remote rating where uh someone could be at a location somewhere in the world and then they could send invites to people to invite them to that raid remotely and so what people were doing is they were exchanging friends codes they were using third-party apps to you know uh matchmake basically and get into those raids well, when uh, the pandemic, you know, subsided as much as it has, uh, <laughs> Niantic rolled that back. And everyone was like, wait a second, but we pay you money to do these things. And you're getting rid of this source of income for yourselves. Why would you do that? Like, I'll, I people are, were happily paying like five bucks a week or something, even just to like, you know, remote raid and get some legendary Pokemon or something. Why would you 
take that back. There's yeah, they've just done so many weird things with that game, and this is just yeah, another one of those. It's so odd. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on over there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what book becomes of Niantic. Uh, last thing here, Hades Two has started its technical test. Some people are playing Hades Two right now. I peeked in on some streams. I don't have a code yet myself, and hey, it looks like Hades more, and that looks fantastic to me. I loved Hades. Just seeing some cool little plot details here. I won't get into specifics in case people don't want to know. Don't worry. Jeff's not here. <laughs> Nothing will be spoiled for you today. <laughs> um, you know, seeing some returning character, seeing some some new ones. I confess this. I wasn't in the last one, I believe, and you have uh, him here. Hmm. I am just so ready uh, for this. I am not much of an early access kind of guy. This isn't even really the early access. So, right. as badly as I want to play it, there is still a part of me that does just want to wait, but that that means probably waiting till next year uh, i don't i don't At know at least right yeah how, how do you this is just a tech test how do you feel do you want to play the, uh, the this or the uh early access or are you gonna uh, are you, you gonna win sean tell us tell us <laughs> right now well okay well first of all to to start uh i never actually played all the way through hades one because uh, i picked up like the intro but um I've I've just never been a roguelike guy or even roguelite for the most Interesting. part. Interesting. That's in man, general. that's kind of the 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 the, the soup du jour. That's not really the phrase, but Yeah, like. I, well, you you're on something here. I know you're chef coded, chef pill <laughs> right? I mean, right now. You make something a roguelike and it might be in Jeff Grubb's top 10 game of the year yeah. list, right? Uh it's ironic because Supergiant historically is like one of my favorite I'm, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, I mix up that one. Super massive, but no, no super yeah, time. I do all it's the like time. It's like one too. of my one of my favorite developers in like the 360 era, going to PS4, uh, Xbox One era. I loved Bastion. I thought Transistor was super cool. Uh, and then yeah, Hades came out, and I was just not super thrilled about it. And some people have told me. I, I see Mikey O'Leary in chat, who was one of these people. Uh, who did really try to give it a try, and they're also people who don't love roguelikes either, and they say. Yeah, it didn't change my mind. Oh well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, it is roguelike the roguelike. It's it's very roguelite. That is what's going on there. Um, yeah, and so I I think um, I have developed more appreciation for rogue lights though, and Hades falls more into that sure. category for, to my understanding because you know it is the the entire game is based around you dying, and so that always made it more appealing to me. Right. Thinking, There's a oh, lot okay. of permanent upgrades in Hades, right? Combined with the fact that they have dialogue that specifically references that and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, So Hades has just been on the backlog forever now for me to go back to and try. When Hades 2 got announced, I said, all right, you know, I'll give it an honest shot. If I don't like it, I don't like it, but I do want to get back to it. But as far as the uh, early access thing goes, I'm just not an early access kind of guy. I'm not. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I just want to play the one. I love that shit. Yeah, you know. yeah, you and Grub, you and Grub both like that. Yeah, when yeah. there was drop a new update, you see how they change, like it's like, cool. Not only like weapons or adding stuff, how they change their, they mold their ideas around yeah. uh, community feedback. It's it's pretty cool. I it's cool that. to be involved in that. I agree. I just yeah, I I I don't even know how to describe it, what to put my finger on, but it is just one of those things where I prefer the the finished product. Did you, uh, like me, roll your eyes a bit at everybody? Was that last year or before, uh, putting Vampire Survivors high up on their, their Game of the Year list? <laughs> high up? No, but, uh, shoot, what was it in competition with? Because, what, it would have been 2022? Yeah, I guess it wasn't last year, it was the year before that, uh, God, what, what, uh, oh, okay, that, that I didn't have a problem wait, with. The Elden Ring year, was then? <laughs> was that was the yeah. Elden Ring year, and yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I'm not a Souls guy, so I just no, didn't so just... care about Elden Ring. So it was going up against my games of the year, which was like Rumbleverse Yeah, I was about stuff. to say, what so was, was like, your 2022 game of the year? I, I think I settled on saying that Rumbleverse was, yeah. I um, I really liked uh, Scarlet and Violet, despite their flaws, mm, but it, there was so... Freak. I know, but that's the funny thing. 2022 was such a not me year. Obviously, incredible games like Elden Ring, just not for me. So I did have stuff like that in my top five for the year. Uh, you know what yeah, is I, for you, Sean? Hmm. Super Chats. We're going to read those right after a quick little break here. We'll be right back. Okay. Hmm. All right. We're on a break. All right. We can just go to it. I'll read them. You got Let's them? Okay, go. Cool. Yeah, I got them. 
and we're back. All right, we got some super chats here. Thank you so much to everyone who has sent one. You can still send in your super chat. We will read your comment or question during the show. Uh, Radu Pericle Tagana says, Mars After Midnight is great. Worth the $200? Also, Mike, play Tangle Tower. Best in class of uh, voice acting and animation. Sequel comes out this year. Okay, I don't, yeah, I don't know either of these, I think. I don't know why Mars After Midnight would be $200. Maybe local for whatever that translates oh, to. Oh, right, right, right. That's That makes more yeah, sense. Yeah, because the Super Chat is in a different uh, currency. So that's, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Tangle Tower. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Willow Davis says, don't forget about Sega's best, uh, Billy Hatcher. Yeah, we're going to be doing... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to be doing our Sega Mount Rushmore later. But what do you think about Billy Hatcher? Because I, uh, I think I didn't care for it. And I like Glover. I mean, it's, it's solid. I think it's solid. Not it's amazing. Fine. But yeah, it is Glover adjacent. I think I think that's fun. It, I it like is Glover the, as well. But It is the only other 3D platformer that you could say is a Glover-like. Right? <laughs> that's <laughs> so true. Yeah, where you're rolling around big. Uh, Katamari adjacent. But yeah, gl- yeah, yeah, but that's not really a platformer, Katamari. I don't know. No. Definitely not. Yeah, it's more of a puzzle game. I do want to. I want to play Billy Hatcher again. It's been so long. Uh, that boy Jerry says, "Please tell me you saw that Red Lobster is considering filing for bankruptcy from losing money on the endless shrimp deal." Rest in peace, Cheddar Bay Biscuits. Now look, now look. This is distressing news, everybody. Filing yes. for bankruptcy does not mean that you're done. You're done. That's just uh, correct. It's just it's a it's a thing you do so that you can kind of protect yourself from certain financial things. I don't understand it, but it doesn't necessarily mean. The end of Red Lobster will be okay, everybody. The Cheddar Bay Biscuits will continue. We'll get our popcorn shrimpies. I'll get my Cajun chicken <laughs> Alfredo. We'll all be fine. At the very least, as long as they keep selling them in the stores, in that uh, mix, we'll be all right. Yeah. We'll be all right. I don't know if I've actually done the mix. Is it is it really as good, getting the mix? I don't know. I tried it once, and it was, you know, it was pretty, pretty close. Good. It wasn't the same, but it was yeah. pretty darn close. I, mean, I was a little be impressed. Nothing can be the no, same. no. Chris Pratt says, so happy more people are enjoying video game adaptations after my groundbreaking performance. Reminds me of when I was stomping Hoopas in Mario Arcade. Thank you, Chris. Who could forget? Yeah. Who could forget? But, you know, the Mario movie did, like, and so, help sell Mario games. And unlike Fallout, people went to go buy a Mario game. They were paying 60 bucks for that, <laughs> right? There was yeah. no <laughs> sale. Um so uh, Nintendo did very well <laughs> from all that. Yeah, they got who would a thought very Nintendo nice was that figured out, right? Right. <laughs> right. It wasn't just like one game. Every Mario game on the Switch was still sixty bucks. I think so. Yes, yeah. pretty much. Uh, Chris Pratt uh, is back. Says Mike has never Kingdom come Chris, on. <laughs> what? Well, this is like your Bubba oh, Gump Chris. mind. Come on, I thought you were classy now. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> also oh, not true. Oh, wow. Uh, the Uncharted oh. Wolf says. Thoughts on us getting a Medieval 2 remake before Jack, Ratchet, or Sly remakes? Man, I love Sony. Wait, did they really announce a Medieval 2 remake? That, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a rumor. I definitely didn't well, see it. Well, they remade the they remade uh by Medieval, I mean Medieval, because they remade the first yeah. uh Medieval. And, you know, it seemed like no one cared, <laughs> right? At all. Uh so I just would be shocked if they were actually doing the second one, which I, I understand is supposed to be a better game. By there's all a, accounts. There's a medieval too. <laughs> uh PlayStation Lifestyle.com oh, look at that. <laughs> says reportedly releasing soon. I mean uh, sure. it's from an insider who previously leaked the existence of the Gravity Rush 2 remaster. Hey, like again, mm. I think that's neat. Uh you already did the first one. This one's supposed to be better. I am surprised. I am surprised. Who did the other ocean what on earth other ocean did the medieval remake i didn't realize that yeah. so okay well that makes sense because they're probably not doing much else right now right it's you know the thing with ratchet and and all those other ones right those are oh. those are still very big published developers at sony who are busy making other games and hang they- on mike this is this is really going to take away from other oceans work on cloudy mountain and night stalker for the Amico. I don't know if they're going to be able to do this. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't shit. know about this. Well, no, that's why this is happening. <laughs> they probably got <laughs> they got some time. Who, I'm trying to find out who did develop uh, mid- Medieval originally. Oh, it was uh, so uh, Gorilla Cambridge. Who the hell is Gorilla Cambridge? <laughs> A different We're part. We're learning so much tonight. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, so hey, whatever. Great. They're making uh, Medieval. Uh, Gorilla Cambridge uh, okay. is not around they- anymore. 
Yeah, they were just SCE back then. I see. I see. Right. That's what happened. Just an internal PlayStation Studio. Got, yeah. Got. So, hey, yeah. Anybody can go and remake Medieval. Whereas if you want to remake Ratchet and Clank or a Jack and Dexter, you got to talk to Insomniac or uh, freaking Naughty, Naughty Dog. Dog. And they, yeah. might, they, oh, they might not let you play with their toys. Speaking of um, PlayStation, real quick. Someone in the chat uh, mentioned something that reminded me. Uh, how do you feel about the idea of a PlayStation launcher on PC? It's, uh, I don't know. It's just, I, 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 I certainly don't need any more of those. I kind of just hope right. that it's just is integrated into their games on Steam. I don't want a launcher. Yeah. I put up with it with Xbox because at least I get access to these Game Pass games on there. But like, yeah achievements do nothing for me and all this other stuff i hate having when i get a code sometimes i have to activate on the xbox launcher instead of in steam i really just i want everything on steam i want everything on steam same because it just works you know yep oh the dogs are barking now penny's upset the soundboard got it yeah uh uh, mr jody says hey mike despite the meme is hollow knight niche or is giant bomb just full of uncultured gamers also i have a dog named penny if you need to borrow one for some uh, reason. I mean, niches are always relative. Uh, I would say no, it's not niche. Hollow Knight's a very in terms of indie games, uh, Hollow Knight is as popular uh, as they can come in a lot of ways. I think that's it's it's probably sold five million copies or more. I, I guess I'm not sure how what the sales numbers are on Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight again, again, that's probably been on sale a lot. Uh, over three million as of December 2020 is what I got up. That was a while ago. It's been up since then, so you know it. It's always like, it, it, hey, like, it, it, is it niche in terms of like the world? <laughs> sure, is it niche <laughs> in terms of like people who are watching a show like this? No, a lot. I bet a lot of people here under know what Hollow Knight is and care about it, especially in the grand scheme of indie games or even Metroidvanias or what have you. I mean, yeah, Metroidvania is still certainly a niche genre in the grand scheme of things. But that doesn't right. mean that, you know, it's it's like so small beans it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, also <laughs> I I looked up uh the so what leaked out of the whole PlayStation thing is that uh they are doing the integration with the games on Steam at least, but this brought up the fact that they were originally going to do a launcher and maybe they would be bringing that back. As, okay. That's just speculation. Okay, I see, I see. All right, well, that's it for Super Chats. We want to go right into uh, uh, Mount Rushmore here. Or should we take uh, another? Yeah, let's, just go, we, let's just go. We took go a right break a little it. bit yeah. ago. Let's okay, just go cool. right sounds into good. it. Sounds good. All right. So, everybody, we are doing Mount Rushmore of furries right now. Uh, right. Uh, sh- right. Yeah, I guess you got to take lead on this uh, one, Sean. Oh, I don't really God, quite God. understand it Should've myself. Yeah, it okay. says, says Sega games. Is that a typo? That is a typo. We are clearly doing the Mount Rushmore of uh, furries in video games. Okay, go. Uh, let's go. Let's go fast this one because maybe we can still squeeze Sega in here. Uh, who, who who do you got? Oh, we need Crystal on there. Okay, you need Crystal. Uh, yes. How about, how about that 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 bunny Pokemon? Uh, Lopany. Good call. Lopany. Yeah, you got to have the the Lopany. Absolutely. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Does uh does Candy Kong do anything for you? I kind of am weirded out by her. Ah, the proportions are very yeah. 90s on that one. Yeah, it's, it's upsetting. Same thing with like the girl Conker uh, and mm-hmm. Crash Bandicoots. Mm-hmm. Although Crash Bandicoots is actually better for some reason. I don't mind Tana. Ooh, ta- remake Tana. Remake like, Tana. Like, very nice. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. From remake Tana's good. The bunny from from uh, what's what's her name? Space yeah. Jam. From what? From Space from Jam. S- That's not a video game character. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. You're Christian, you are not helping. Come on. And, I'm a, I'm a anyways. Okay. Well, you Rouge gotta have bad. Yeah, I was about to say you gotta have Rouge. You gotta have yeah. Rouge. All right, I like it. Uh Mount Rushmore of Furries in video games. It's Crystal, Lopani, Tanya, and Rouge the Bat. Fantastic. Well, why don't we switch over to Sega now? I guess if we have to, much. <laughs> Just in okay. case if we have to. Uh all right, man. This is actually pretty hard to find just four games to represent Sega because there are some that just kind of have to be there. And then there are so many other sectors of Sega that you could touch upon. Mm-hmm. I Look, I think you have to have Sonic the Hedgehog. And I think in Mount Rushmore yeah, terms, I mean, it really, should be Sonic. This is 
This is why we're doing it when Jeff's not here, right? So yeah. Sonic actually gets on the list, right? <laughs> yeah. And it should be Sonic the Hedgehog 1, I think, in this case. For Mount Rushmore, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was this very, very big deal. It split started everything. I know that yeah. I know we talked I know we talked before like uh, I'm I'm much more of a Sonic One guy than you are in general but in terms of Rushmore right. terms like of course Sonic Two was also very big but it was like a trajectory it's not like it was this giant let's, like step up let's talk options here because the options are Sonic One yeah I think Sonic Three and Knuckles is at least in the conversation because of the legacy of it. People don't love Sonic 1 as much anymore, but 3 and Knuckles is like the one people usually go to in addition yeah. to being a fairly big game back then. They're wrong, There's though. that Sonic Adventure, at least, is in the conversation. Shh. That was a big release. It's a big release. Hey, yeah, trust me. And I liked Sonic Adventure a lot in the time. Yeah. Um, and, of course, uh, everyone's favorite Sonic 06, which is yeah. the most infamous. <laughs> well, if we, write, if we just write Sonic the Hedgehog, it, maybe we mean 06. We're oh, not specifying. Shoot, you're right. There you go. <laughs> Right, I talked you into it. <laughs> that. All right. Sonic the Hedgehog. Got it. I think you have to have something to represent the arcade era and maybe specifically kind of like the, the, the that early 3D era. And I don't know. It's hard for me because they were big pioneers in 3D gaming in the arcades. And like the real big pioneer ones, it, it was like what was first and most important. You can make a case for virtue racing. And then Daytona just seems like so much better than that in a lot of ways, and also important because it was now textured polygons. Um, Virtual Fighter, similar thing. Very early, very successful uh, uh, fighting game. Uh, I, I guess if if I had to pick a rep from that kind of important arcade era, for me, Daytona USA might be my go-to. I wonder if you, as like a fighting game fi- uh, fighting game guy, feel more strongly about Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter is easily one of the most influential games ever made. We wouldn't have 3D fighters without them, but we also wouldn't potentially have esports without them, which may seem like a crazy statement to people. But Japan hopped on the esports bandwagon or created the esports bandwagon because of Virtua Fighter back in like the mid 90s. So. I think it is the bigger game than Daytona, personally. As mm-hmm. much as like Daytona is a fantastic game, a beloved game, I think uh, Virtua Fighter has more let's, cachet. Let, let's <laughs> do on those two. Maybe we'll see what like the uh, our supporters think or everyone on Discord because sure. it's. I think it is between those two. Would you like considering the even earlier arcade games like an Outrun or anything like that? Uh, that's I think that gets gets us to what a Mount Rushmore is because you know Mike you and Jeff sometimes stray from the form. oh wow <laughs> well, Whoa. sometimes you play favorites a little bit what? I'm no here way. to make sure that, no way. Nah, never nah. I'm here to make sure that we strike the balance between influential as well as still important and something like outrun certainly influential is it important still? Is it still beloved? I don't think so. so okay, so let me uh, let me ask you this, because I feel like there should be a Dreamcast game, but it's kind of hard. It's hard to, f- mm. like, what is the one Sega-made Dreamcast game? In some ways, it's Sonic Adventure, but we're not going to do exactly. another Sonic game. So it's like, you like there, there's so many of these that are of equal importance to me, like Jet Set Radio, Samba de Amigo, uh, Shenmue, mm. Crazy Taxi, Skies of Arcadia. Like, they're all bangers of almost equal stature to me. It's hard to look at one and be like, that's that's the one. It's, it's got to be Seaman specifically or Virtua Tennis. Some people are saying Fantasy Star Online, which I oh, think is a good call. That's a good, a call. Very good call. You know, I'm going to put it at least in the I do like, like uh, that sublist here. Because it's, it's Dreamcast, and it's also like... It's an important game. It's very important to online yeah. gaming. The, on the, the, the problem is that... He invented the, the Schluter. Yeah. Of. A little bit? A little bit? The problem... It, 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 it bothers me a bit that it seems to like not matter a whole lot now. I know that there are Fantasy yeah. Star Online games that people can play. It's like a shame that there isn't some Fantasy Star Online that's like one of the big online games out there, right? right? I mean, they have one right now. PSO2 is a yeah. thing, yeah, and people they, they, play. It's just not it, big. Well, anymore. they took forever getting it over here. It was yeah. way too late and by so the time I, we got on the West. A little too late. So I think that's where it 
it loses points on importance. Um, well, what about Shenmue? what about because Shen- Shenmue is very important. Um, Shenmue is very important. That sort of a uh, life sim mixed with uh, combat. Yeah. Game. Yeah. In terms of like these games striving for realism, it was one of the first ones. Um, some people really hate Shenmue. I'm not one of them. I still like Shenmue. Uh, and it clearly a very important game, a very ambitious game. Um, w- what's your favorite of like the weird Dreamcast games, which which there are a lot of. And when I think of well, Dreamcast, that's what I often think of. I don't know how weird you would say this is, but kind of is. But I think the my answer to the what Dreamcast game would you put on there in general is kind of a weird game as well. And it is a very important Sega arcade game. It is Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi makes sense to me. Um, like, it, it, yeah. to this day, people think fondly of Crazy Taxi, and it was huge. It's coming back. Arcades. It's coming it is, back. It is, too. Yeah. I like Samba de Amigo yeah. a lot. I think it's hard for me to argue it belongs there. Part of me wants, nah. <laughs> wants to consider C-Man just because it is the weirdest one, and that sort of epitomizes what that Dreamcast era <laughs> was about to me in some ways. But also, um, how many people outside of yeah. AVGN viewers remember? Right, probably that? not gonna play. Uh, I think it, cra- I think Crazy Taxi and Jet Set Radio are similar in yeah. terms of like prestigious, but like real standard but bearer Dreamcast games. Yeah, the difference there is that Jet Set Radio was almost like a beautiful moment in time, whereas Crazy Taxi, we said the words and suddenly the chat is going yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I know, and oh. that yeah. That says something. Okay, so how about the kind of third party era? Um, to me, the first thing that comes to mind is Yakuza. I think that's yeah, kind of yeah. kind of easy and emblematic. It's almost a question of which one at this well, point. Well, again, right? like I think you, I think I think on Mount Rushmore, especially unless there's some real circumstance, you kind of just go with the first one in a lot I of way. I think there's a big, big argument to be made for Yakuza. Zero, specifically. yeah. People, people do like zero a lot. And look, I'm a lot of people came into the series with zero, yeah. I'm not, and I'm not a big uh, duck as a guy yet, uh, so I could I have to defer a little bit here. Uh, zero is does seem like because for a while we weren't even maybe getting all the Yakuza games and uh, like they were or they weren't getting translated. Zero was when it seemed like it really started taking off, and then of course, much more so with um, seven. Uh, but yeah, I could see zero being the case. I do. There's a part of me that wishes I could consider more Genesis ones, and the one Genesis one I do want to consider uh, is Streets of Rage two, just uh, all time banger, sixteen bit era game, still probably the best beat 'em up ever. I was just listening to the soundtrack today on my oh, record it's so player. Good. It's an all time great soundtrack. Yeah. The, the vibes yeah, that, in that uh, game are immaculate. That video game music playlist I gave Jeff that he uh, plays sometimes before shows. Yeah, I have some Streets of Rage 2 music on there because it's so good. That's that's where Expander is from, I believe. And that's just yeah. a classic song. That's so good. Uh, but you, you think Streets of Rage 2 over, well, for Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say over four, but yeah, definitely in terms of yeah, Mount Rushmore. Yeah, I mean, I, Sega's involvement in Floor C is like really like. It's like, minimal. It's minimal. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah, which so. was probably for the best in the long run with the way that game turned out. Yeah, we'll see how good like the actual Super Sega backed New Streets of Rage is going to be because I'm yeah. skeptical. Um, OK, what if, is there anything from the Saturn era? I, I love the Saturn. Don't get me wrong. It's just like this anything to me, the most Saturn uh, stuff that I think of. And it's not arcade ports in Japan. I know it's the arcade ports that did well. I think of Panzer Dragoon. Uh, that's what really mattered to me. Those were the kind of prestige games of their time, even though they were on real shooters. And then later, yeah, the RPG. I'm not quite sure if it's going to if even that, though, is going to make it on a Mount Rushmore. No, I don't think so. And the game that I would say from the Saturn also will not make it. I just want to explain the case for it. Hypothetically, uh, Sakura Wars is yeah. one of the most important games of all time low key like Virtua Fighter. People don't know this, but it was so influential on Japanese development. Uh the combination of visual novel, romance, dating sim stuff with combat. It's what got us to where Fire Emblem is today and blew up, you know? And so many are games that have done stuff like that. It is extremely influential game to developers. But it doesn't necessarily hold that importance with the general. Audience, no, you wouldn't so. have Marvel Midnight Suns without Sakura Wars. <laughs> of course <laughs> not, exactly. Yeah. Also, 
kind of the longest running game also as well. Like that game is all the first games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has, definitely a series there. Yeah, there's like uh, there's other Sega games that I love. Um, like you know, I I even like Knights. It probably can't happen. You know how I feel about Shinobi Three. Big fan yeah. of that. It, you know, Shinobi One. Part of me like that was a big early uh, arcade hit for them, and it was even a Master System hit for them. There's going to be a Master System game, which there won't be. Maybe it would be Shinobi One. Uh uh, before we get too far from the arcade era, though, Mike, I do have another favorite of mine that I want to toss out there for you. Sure. Super Monkey Ball. Yeah, Super Monkey Ball rules. And it, it's kind of the other one from that third party era. Oh, gosh, those games are just it so was, good. It was their uh, their machine with the dull banana controller before that, though, before it was yeah. a GameCube launch game. Or yeah, I even thought about game. that when I was doing the arcade draft with Jeff what, last week. Like, do I do Super Monkey Ball? Because there was that arcade version. It's very iconic. And, and uh, not huge, but very iconic for sure. You see that and you don't forget it. <laughs> yeah, Super Monkey Ball 2 on GameCube was so much fun. Those mm. mini games are just an absolutely uh, great time. I'm excited for the new Super Monkey Ball uh, I'm always happy when I'm playing those games. I'm not quite sure if it's going to make it because there's some stiff competition here now. Um, and to be clear, we're not we're not considering Atlas stuff at all here, right? Well, I, I mean, didn't, I didn't tell the uh, podcast producers yeah. that. And I think if a game came out, I will say it needs to be a release from after Atlas was owned by no. someone. No. I don't even no, know. I disagree with that. Yeah, I disagree. It's all with under that. the same umbrella. Like, yeah, I just no, don't think of them as Sega not, games. Not, they're so separated. Like even now, I know. even now that Sega I owns know. Atlas, is this still super separated? So yeah. And we we're, 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 no, we're, we already have so few spots up for contention here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just I'm just explaining what the situation is. All so right. if maybe we switch over here and you see some Atlas all stuff, right. don't be surprised. Yeah, we're gonna ban all of them. Yeah, yeah, you'll get kicked out. <laughs> and uh, I see some people in chat saying Total War, maybe other people. I just n- never been a Total War no. guy. That's right. also well, that's also one of those things where Total War people associate with that's that was Sega. It wasn't I mean, always I, Sega. I, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's one true. Of those weird ones. Yeah, it's weird. Why don't we take? Are a, you know what? Let's switch over. Let's take a look. Or should we take a break right now before we do that? Actually. Yeah, let's do a little let's break. Let's take a quick right, break. A break. I might quick. go to the bathroom, so let's do that. We'll All be right, right back, everybody. We're going to hash out the rest of this Mount Rushmore. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, be back. All right, break time. I was okay. about to say one, but it, because it's, we are in this, I'm talking to you people. And when, when you, pe- you people, with you people, I mean you people, the, the, the gringos. But I, I remember <laughs> like the biggest, the biggest Sega game of my, like in Argentina was uh, Virtual Soccer. Or like a virtual striker, mm. I think it was. It was that did, did yeah. It, it, I think that game was pretty pretty big. Of course, yeah, I mean, there's a lot big. of games that I really like that I would like to put on the list, but yeah, definitely won't uh, end yeah, up here because I don't think they hold that importance anymore. Yeah, yeah, but I remember like virtual striker being like the first actual like football game ever. <laughs> like every other <laughs> game that came out before that, it was like this weird like tiny dudes in a green background just like kicking a white square and that's it it wasn't well like when did that game come out uh virtual striker oh yeah. i don't know i was like seven <laughs> let me let me look virtual it up virtual striker yeah let's take a look oh 94 uh, yeah 94 yeah, 97. Really. i was i was gonna make a joke about um mega man soccer but that's even before that i believe <laughs> dang yeah Oh, yeah, that's, that. yeah. yeah, I've never I've never paid much attention to those. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, I remember them being pretty. Well, I, yeah. personally, you know, so much from, of like the school. so much of the Virtua series, you know, that uh, that's our branding that Sega had with fighter and everything. Oh, man. Yeah, it's so weird because some games were virtual and some other games were virtual with the L at the end. I, I think like, it was the just virtual on um, the mech game i think that was the only one i think everything else is virtual uh, with just the a oh you're the right game. you're right Vitra striker is without the l i i, I thought yeah. it was like like uh oh, virtual I'm racing sure they was thing. with the l uh, it's confusing because they mix you up that one time wait what the hell sonic <laughs> was in virtual striker 3 Holy hey, hey, you could play the sega team they had a bunch of like fake names on it Daytona, let's go. Away. All right, you want to jump in? Yeah, let's jump in. 
Okay, let's do it. All right, we're back, Sean. Let's see what our Discord community has to suggest here for our Mount Rushmore. Okay, sounds good. Starting off strong here with an Atlas title. <laughs> Chaos Buckaroo says uh, 13 Sentinels, which, you, hey. Yeah, Atlas Freaks. I, I want to talk about it later. I finally started Unicorn Overlord. So. Oh, yeah, we'll, mm. have, to, we'll have to chat about it. Let's see how you're feeling about it yeah, since maybe. I'm a little down at it. Uh, Jackie G does say Shenmue. We were talking about that for a while there. Yeah, I, uh, I do want to play Shenmue again. Uh, it's it's an interesting experience. It's a fun time. Uh, Goblin Queen here says a uh, Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown, which I think can be interpreted as one of the Virtual Fighter games. But this is just the most recent and probably most complete release. But yeah, one of the Virtual Fighter games I definitely think I did uh, uh, worth talking about. Uh, you know, I had a Saturn pretty early, so we did play a lot of mm-hmm. Virtual Fighter. I, we, but we also mm-hmm. got the uh, 32x version of Virtual Fighter, which was not bad. <laughs> Was pretty good shockingly also. right right yeah, the uh what the original there was some let's see that was different than the uh genesis one that was like just right the, side the 32x one oh, yeah. was just virtual fighter with just like lower polygons but it was right. a 3d fighting game and then they okay. mailed uh they mailed us virtual fighter remix or whatever because like the first version of it was so janky so that was also great oh interesting yeah, interesting. yeah. okay uh b says persona 3 reload oh <laughs> <laughs> uh screaming madden says rome total war or one of the rome games i guess just in general beef hammer says persona 3 I look look here, we'll, we'll, here. I, I promise we'll do a mount rushmore of atlas at some point i did i would get i got very excited every time he uh said that new version of that line in uh i've been pre- waiting for this yeah, yeah it's not quite the same though it's, it's not, not the same the but same. it's good you know akihiko it's, was like the most different voice but i still liked it yeah, in the original, he's like, I've been, I've been waiting for this. And then he's yeah. like, I've been waiting for this. He really is like, I've been waiting for this. Yeah, I'm like, the yeah. delivery is a lot better. It's it's yeah. serious. Uh, Akihiko's, <sighs> Akihiko's good. He would be, Akihiko would be on my Mount Rushmore of Persona party members. How about that? Ooh, <laughs> Mount, yes. Mount Rushmore of boxers. What was your uh, What was your final party in Persona 3 Reload? Uh, it was Yukari because you gotta have a healer. Um, Mitsuru and Akihiko. Okay, okay. A, if if you yourself are the fire user, which especially once you get into more powerful ones like Seth at the end, uh, it's very easy to do. Or you can inherit it onto something like one of the other personas. Then you have a good spread of elements, as well as there's just a wombo combo where you Akihiko and Mitsuru can. Raise your attack, lower the enemy's defense, yeah. and just yeah, just get get things popping off. It's great. I was uh, uh Kuchaka. Oh, what's the name? I always forget the name of those spells because they're so weird. Oh just... yeah, and, and there's like Kentara Fu and so yeah, yeah. I did yeah. uh, I did Yukari and Akiko, but I did Igus, and uh, I never usually use like the mm-hmm. physical attack one, but Igus was very strong. It was Same. fun doing that. Yeah, especially once you unlock her, um, what did they even call them? Like personality traits. Yeah, yes. she's basically, all of hers are just, her attacks are better. I'm like, all so, right, then let's go. And, you know, plus yeah, with Yukari just healing for free basically every turn, doesn't matter if she's using HP. Anywho, next. Yeah. Uh, ABC, always be clothing, says, I'm assuming this is Yakuza Zero. I just know it's Kiryu uh, taking shirt off and showing yeah. his uh, dragon tattoo. And then Inufe explicitly says Yakuza Zero. So. Yeah. Maybe if we do put Yakuza game on there, maybe it is zero. Yeah, uh, makes sense. I don't uh, remember is, Kiryu mm-hmm. having the full tattoo on zero. Isn't that the... Okay. So it may ask Kiwami. It might be one. Yeah, because uh, the box art for Yakuza 1, which I still have back there, is that back dragon tattoo. Oh, fair point. Fair mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Sorry, different hairstyle. Too. Okay. Uh, SWSP says Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Interesting. I had, a po- been, uh, I had a poster of that hanging in my room, but it was like from the back angle. It was good stuff. Ah, nice. Yeah, it's it's good image with uh Robotnik up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh Freedom McLibri Ball has uh this would be the first like a dragon game over yeah. here. So Yakuza seven. There you go. Which there's an argument to be made for that because a lot of people hopped in with like it a did. dragon as well. Yeah, I think it helped so. that it was kind of a launch game for the new consoles. A lot of people definitely took notice. Uh, and and the was... switch to uh, turn base was nice. And big for me, because I just, for a variety of reasons, can't really do subtitles. It was the first one since the original PS2 release of one to have an English dub. Yeah, I remember for a while they weren't doing that. Yeah, and it was annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Which is, yeah, it's the only reason that the series could come over here. Budget reasons. 
Uh, Breadfish does ring up Outrun, so there, there you go, go. Mikey. Love for Out- Outrun. Outrun is a vibe. Um, of, of the super scalar games, this is definitely the best one. Back when sp- being able to scale sprites was considered impressive. Uh, Villain Mac here has this would be uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. This which, is uh, yeah. Yeah, I, in general, it's hard to convince me that like games that are less than a year old can be on a Mount Rushmore, but maybe. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it's sort of just another representative for Yakuza in general. Uh, Teriyaki Blue says Streets of, R- Streets of Rage 2. Streets of Rage 2 go. is so good. Jirashi says, now I know this is Yakuza 0 because of the way they're dancing. I've seen that before. Uh, Tommy Pencil says Skies of Arcadia. That is very high on my to my bucket list. Uh, my pile of shame. Mm-hmm. Got to play some Skies Same. of Arcadia. I played a bit of it back in the day, but there's a lot more I got to do. Yeah, uh, one of the streamers I watched actually used to speed run it, so I've seen it. Oh, wow. Of this, but I've never played it myself. Uh, Higante says Persona 5, which <laughs> is this is the one I would give people. But if you really just want to do zero Atlas. Uh, actually, Sean, I think that's Persona 5 Royale. I noticed that girl there who's not in the original. <sighs> Persona 5. Oh, first wow. of all, you dork is royal, not royale with cheese. Oh. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but Persona 5 in general was uh, was post purchase. Would so. you get this? Over four? Would I mean, if I put four? one on there, I would, uh, it would be five. Well, first of all, four wouldn't be eligible by the rule that <laughs> yeah, I said four that is we probably are not doing anyways. You're right. You're 100% right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but as um, maybe we bring up later, probably not. Uh, either way, good game. Casual says Sonic and Knuckles. I do like sure. that emblem. Good emblem. Uh, Ali Mary Cerveza Cristal says Space Channel 5. It's hey, Space Michael. Uh, Space Michael, yeah. Yeah. God, Space Channel Five is weird. It's weird, but it's fun. Uh, it's fun. It's good. Yeah. It's good stuff. I don't think it's quite Matt Rushmore for me, but it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, Vanderlyle says Kid Chameleon. Kid man, you want to like Kid Chameleon, but it's a uh, it's a weird. And that's isn't that rumored to be another one coming back? That's strange. Kid Chameleon. I think that might have been one of the ones where they said, "Yeah, this wasn't announced, but it's a potential." Weird. One. I think that's one. I'm kind of mad. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm going to be mad if we get Kid Chameleon before Echo. I'll just say it. How dare you? <laughs> How fucking dare you? Uh, the Rebirth Wolf Five says Keanu Reeves as Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, yeah, I played Shadow the Hedgehog not too long ago. Look, there's definitely worse Sonic games, I guess. There are, but it's just... It's so it's, it's a fucking good. annoying game. They no pe- People don't it's shut weird. the fuck up the entire time you're playing it. Yeah, it's not a... Gr- it's almost like twin stick shootery. It's weird. I, I, yeah, I don't love it. Who the hell is uh, this? Joy Z has a Persona 5. This is an all-out attack. Is this a royal character? Who is this person? Um... A spoiler, that's who that is. Uh, Jamie <laughs> H1224. <laughs> I don't remember says, that. Uh, Jet Set Radio Future. <laughs> Yeah, or it might be Jack Ryan Radio. I can't tell the difference. Uh, uh, this is, uh, well, first first of all, they spelled out. Oh, they spelled it. Well, there you go, then. Yeah, yeah Jet Set uh, Radio Future. Choco Bop says, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that is. Crazy Taxi. What's what's the more, more icon- iconic song, uh, Sega song for you? Is it that, or is it the Rolling Stars? Oh, it's this. I know it's not it's... Sega specifically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's definitely this. Okay. I, I'm convinced an entire generation would not know The Offspring if it wasn't for Crazy Taxi. That's yeah, probably fair. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ryan says Persona 4 Golden. That definitely doesn't count. Or does Golden count? I don't think so. Golden on PC no. would, but that's the only one, so I'm saying no. Yeah. <laughs> The PC version does count. Ah, oh, uh, Surface Kane says this would be Outrun... Outrun 2... 2000. Outrun 2. Yeah, Outrun 2 or... Let's say Outrun 2. It's probably Outrun 2. Yeah, are 2 and 2006... They're two they're different s- games based on the same thing. They're similar. Right? Yeah, they're it's, similar. It's like um, Ridge Racer 6 and 7. Kind yes, of. it's kind of like that. Yeah, okay. That's okay. a good way of putting it. And uh, this is a very good game. Oh, it is. Yeah, I've played it. Very good. Uh, I've played one of them. Very good. Uh, Johnny Boy does say Super Monkey Ball. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, Caleb L says Angry Birds Friends uh, featuring Jesus Sonic Christ. the Hedgehog. And r- the bird doesn't even look angry in there. It's smiling. I know. Red, he lost his edge. Boo. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, he's no longer racist. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't hate the pigs anymore. Oh, that's Great. right. That the entire movie was about racism. Jesus Christ, I forgot. Yeah. And uh, the Bench, racism is good type deal. He was weird. Bench JC says Persona 5 Royale with cheese. Mm. I like that cheese. 
Uh, Willow Davis says Rouge the Bat. Rouge has already been on one Mount Rushmore tonight. That's true. Oh, my God. Let's That's spread true. the love a little. She got her time in the sun. Jeez. Uh, Super Harmon says Streets of Rage 2. There you and go. More Streets of Rage 2, love. Uh, Clink says the Fancy Star Online branded GameCube keyboard controller. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Well, something I've learned from all of these... Uh, mm. Mount Rushmore's or anything is that if Persona can be an option, it's going to always be, be a popular option. Yeah, of course it is, dude. You know why? Because Persona's everyone great. loves Bucket John. Ah, everyone Bucket loves John. Bucket John. Bucket John's here. Bucket John, hello. She had to make a cameo. She Hi, Bucket John. <laughs> uh, Cryoris says Persona 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vision 49 says Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring me back. Team Money OG says Yakuza 0. Nice. Uh, input name here says Yakuza 0. Matt, the rare botanist, says, I believe this is Yakuza 0. Man, lots of Yakuza 0 uh, love mm-hmm. here. I, gotta, I have Told to play you. that. I have to play that. I I started. I didn't finish it. I, uh, I'm i not a huge fan of the beat-em-up Yakuza's, actually. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I liked Like a Dragon, and I'm enjoying Infinite Well so much I might go back. Uh, Hammond of Texas says Sonic Spinball. Look, I'm a Sonic Spinball defender, but it has two mm-hmm. major problems. One, the frame rate, which for a Sonic game, bad. For a pinball game, yeah, you need a high frame rate. This thing is chugging for some reason. Uh, and then two, yeah. bad music. Like if when you think of that Sonic Gems style music, which is like real farty and harsh, yeah. this is kind of the poster child for that shit. Yeah. But I kind of love it anyways. I kind of love it anyways. Oh, here's one. Like Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy, says House of the Dead. House of the Dead is good. Uh, all, all those games are good. House of the Dead 1 and 2, then House of the Dead 3, the shotgun one, and House of the Dead 4, mm-hmm. the SMG one. Those are all super fun light gun games. Typing of the Dead, also shout outs to that. <laughs> I'd probably shout outs for sure. Yeah, House of the Dead 2 is probably the, the big one for me if I had to pick one of them. Right. Uh, Adam Asleep says Toe Jam and Earl. And I believe that's specifically the sprites from Planet or from uh, 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 Funkotron, the sequel. Yeah. Pro Jam 2, which is the correct answer, actually. So thank you. <laughs> uh, Adam Juice has, I believe this would be Sonic Adventure 2. This, this would be. Yes, yes. We have the power yes. of Shadow. Oh, uh, yeah. I see, the, I see the soap shoes. Yep. It's Sonic Adventure 2. Yep. Uh, Weezman says Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine. I do like this Mean Bean Machine. It's just Poyo Poyo, but I do like it. <laughs> Uh, Warden Cliff has an answer that I would have expected from Screaming Madden, uh, ESPN NFL 2K5. Yeah, yeah, this was a uh, basic, yeah, this was those 2K games that everybody liked, basically the last one ever, I think. Yeah, yeah I did like these because they were a little arcadey while still being a more uh, football sim. I believe this was the one that was uh, 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, Cla- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Klaus Raynor has a C man, or maybe it's Mike man, as we uh, can see Mike. Fantastic. See Mike. It's this is a, a recent picture. I have a goatee. <laughs> That's Mike's a, a, face on C man. Everybody, I already almost got the full beard back. So enjoy the goatee while you can, everybody. <laughs> it's been a week. Uh, and then the last one here for now. RT Big says Daytona. Okay. Here's what I'm actually. Here's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. I think absolutely we need oh. Yakuza Zero. Yeah, based on what everyone says, based on us wanting to put Yakuza on there somewhere. I, I do want to say, I don't think anyone said this outside of I just saw Kevin say in the chat. Puyo Puyo. Puyo Puyo, maybe, yeah. It's probably not, but... Wait, probably you, not, but I'll shortlist it. You have no love for columns? Fuck columns. I think... It's, oh, it's the game that was everywhere. I don't care about columns. Yeah, I, look, I don't either. Um, There was also uh, clearly... You know what? There's a lot of crazy taxi love. I think we beat that even more so than Fancy Star. Because there's no Fancy Star Online matches. I think that instead of Fancy Star Online should be the Dreamcast uh, kind of entry. I agree. And then... Because that's... that's, Yeah, it just is too iconic. Okay. Um, So that would mean... Okay, so let's probably moving Daytona out, right? Well, a PSO for sure. PSO. Yeah, I mean, because some people did say Daytona. So I was like, oh, did. maybe, but did, you're right. and we already have one card game, <laughs> and I know it's very different, but yeah, I- I'll say this. I was, sh- I was shocked, like, seemingly nobody else brought a Brush of Fighter. Yeah, but Way more Streets of Rage 2. Way, way more Streets real. of Rage 2 than Virtua Fighter. Despite my influence, despite Christian's influence, not a lot of fighting game fans out there. I know. Even in our audience. 
Uh, I know. He didn't. <laughs> so, so, I, but, but there is a part where it's like, oh, then we should do Streets of Rage 2 instead. But because Streets of Rage 2 also does matter a lot. It does. It does. Uh, I mean, Virtua Fighter, again, there is something about those early 3D games that I do think should be represented. And Virtua Fighter also represents the Saturn era as well. Like, it does both it does. at the same time. So... Okay, I, let, let's go Let's go down the line here real quick. Because Shenmue, I don't think hangs. Probably not enough, no. Uh, Puyo Puyo, like I said, I'll, I'll shortlist it, but no, nah, I don't think so. Uh, we'll skip Streets of Rage, come back to it. Super Monkey Ball? It, I, I think Crazy Taxi fills that niche, right? Right, and also, like, Yakuza Zero is representing that third-party era better for me. Right. Uh, Sonic Adventure, we, nah, we don't need the two Sonic games. No. Uh, and then, yeah, PSO and Daytona USA. So it would be, I think, at this point, either Streets of Rage 2 or Virtua Fighter. And uh, to be clear, I like Streets of Rage 2 more than Virtua Fighter. Streets of Rage 2 is one of my favorite games. I just think in this Mount Rushmore setting, I think having one of their early 3D games and something that kind of represents that Saturn era a bit. But the, th- the 3D arcade thing is more important to me. Uh, right. I think Virtual Fighter is probably there. And, you know, I I got I kind of want to have a Virtua game in there. If, and it, yeah. if it's not gonna be racing uh, or cop or tennis. I kind of Fighter <laughs> makes the most sense to me. Yeah, me and Christian were talking about this while you were uh, on the break. But just the Virtua line of games was so important. I, was. Back I think then. I I think I said this before, but I was a very old when I realized it was Virtua and there is no L. I think I just yeah. always like. Phantom just, saw the L. I just assumed there was a, it was virtual. Virtual on is the only one, and the rest right. of Virtua. Yeah, right. it's, it's very messed weird. up. But hey, look, if, um, they, if this is it right now, Sonic the Hedgehog, Yakuza Zero, Crazy Taxi, and Virtual Fighter, that seems really good to me. It does. I'm just I I'm mulling it over, and I think it. I don't think there's a huge case for anything else. Are we sure it's Sonic One? I think that's one. That's the one thing I'm going to put my foot down a little bit. I think it should be Sonic One. Okay, yeah, because I'm not. I'm not going to debate that one too much because in terms of being a Mount Rushmore, yeah, yeah, I think that feels right. So, and then yeah, I th- I think that feels good. Sonic All the right. Hedgehog, Yakuza Zero, Crazy oh. Taxi, Virtual. You know, I'll even hang on, hang on, just to make it maybe a little more clear. You're gonna oh co- chronologically, these. hell yeah, chronologically. I think we have. Basically, the four major eras of Sega sort of represent. We yeah. have Sonic is uh, the Genesis. Virtua Fighter is transitioned to 3D. Crazy Taxi was Dreamcast into third party. And then Yakuza 0 is maybe their most beloved modern game. It makes a lot of sense. I um, am pretty happy with this. All right. Click it, ship it. I think we're done here. All right. Fantastic. I'm going to tweet this out while we take a little break. We'll come back. Rename more Super Chats and talk about what we've been playing. Sounds good. Break Arena. Okay. Cool, cool. Yeah, let me, that's fun. Let me oops, open up. Oh, it it hurts. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm going to tweet this I wonder now. how much are you going to get jailed How about this? Uh, I'm sure people, you know, especially if other people will be like, what about Atlas games? And then I'll, but, yeah, I, mean, like, I, I get it, but no. Oh, did you, did you, did you tweet it? I'm tweeting it soon. I'm saving the picture. Okay. I, I could, uh, I could add, uh, no Atlas. Oh, you know what? You you sh- want. One second. I have to look at the, take a better screenshot. Uh, don't, uh, don't worry about adding no Atlas. Okay. People want to yell at me. It won't be the first <laughs> time. Uh, <laughs> it won't be the first time. More, more, more interactions for you. Why is this not? That's true. That's that's why Jeff does it. Spoiler alert. Make more money. <laughs> oh wait a second. Am I? No, oh, that's why. That's why I'm doing it wrong. Okay. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first time. Ah. Uh, I am ready for the weekend. I can't believe it's Thursday already. Yeah, I, don't be shocked. I have another kid's birthday party to go to this weekend, but at least it's two at one. They're, they're mushing them together a little bit. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. saving you some time. A little bit. I think I have actually nothing to do on Saturday. Oh, you, uh, <laughs> I see that you, I'm going to retweet your uh, <laughs> furries one. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't wait for Jeff to see that. Uh, I, 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 I um the the gift I put in our group chat earlier, I tweeted that one too, so you saw that. <laughs> you think if we had actually considered that more, we would have come up with like something that we didn't think about? Or you think those are the right four? <laughs> I mean, that's not very different from the one that I gave on the dump truck the there other you know. week. Like, what What was it? Swapped out Tana for, who did I put? Oh, Felicia. But eh, Felicia, I guess, is a furry. Like, to me, that's, like, so humanoid. It's a, I guess Yeah, I know. There, there's an argument to be made against her. So, you know, it if plays. we're just going for that route. Yeah, there is a video okay. game of uh, Space Jam, so Lola Bunny comes. Yeah, I know. Look, obviously... Lola Bunny is incredibly attractive. We all know this, but we should be, oh, it should yeah. be video game yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. I'm just super saying. All right. All right, we can go back into so it. Are we ready? Uh, actually, let me make sure I find out where the last super chat was. Where am I starting on? You're all right. All right, just a couple here, then we'll talk about what Ooh, we've been playing. Carmelita Fox is a good call. What's that from? Hmm. Uh, Sly Cooper. Oh, I don't know. So many places. All right, yeah. right. All right. Ah, we have the better Fox on the list, anyways. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. And we're back. Uh, actually, yeah, what we should do first here is talk about what we've been playing. Sean, if you don't mind me going first, I am excited because uh, I, I got to play a little bit of World of Warcraft, The War Within, the next Aye. expansion. I got to, uh, I had an early peek at the alpha for it. So that was fun. I got to play a little bit like the kind of intro experience and basically run around the first zone, do the major quests there. But get to see some of the big new features uh, in the game. But just kind of like in a grand flavor thing. The whole thing is very mm -hmm. dwarf focused. And I like the dwarves. Every, you know, usually the dwarves get like a quest line or a zone. Or there's like one character who matters. But then it's like, ah, humans and elves, human and elves, orcs, orcs, human, elves, undead. And here it's just like all dwarves all the time. And I'm like, yeah. My first World of Warcraft character was a dwarf hunter, and I've made a lot <laughs> since then, but I still think about that dwarf hunter all the time. Now, when you say that, do you mean it's like the Elizen in 14 in Heaven's Word, where it's just like they're the featured race of the expansion, or is, does it run deeper than that? It kind of runs deeper than that. It's not even because there's like different factions of dwarves, and we're kind of like mm -hmm. meeting a new one. But there's mm -hmm. a lot of other like normal dwarves and dark iron dwarves is another faction. Because even mm -hmm. in 14 in Heaven's Word, in 14 in general... Racial identity is not too much of a thing. You don't meet characters yeah. who really talk a lot about like their uh, their Elezin pride or their Lalafell like right. It's it's all city sure. state based. It's more about where you're from than what you are, which is which sounds beautiful when I say it like that. But you know, it's not <laughs> that much of a distinction, honestly. But like okay. some of the some of the big features here, um, like there's hero talents, basically a new talent tree on top of the normal one where you kind of get to further specialize your character class. Um, so, you know, I was a, I was a paladin uh, and like my two choices were one that really focused on my kind of hammer based abilities. And another one that was really about my kind of holy fire and light abilities. So I just like getting to like kind of pick and choose that flavor aspect of a little bit more and kind of carving out a better identity. And then, you know, it's all that progression, right? You get to look forward to filling out that talent tree and getting all these new skills as you're doing it. Sure. And then there's also, like, the, this thing called delves, which are kind of mini dungeons, basically. And I got to do one of those and run around, and I was, you know, rescuing dwarves. This is supposed to, like, eventually be some form of endgame content. I'm not sure how it expands, but I'm curious to see. But basically, I, I, was, I was pretty impressed. I am kind of really in the mood to get back into World of Warcraft, the they have somehow brought that game back into a really good spot. There are a ton of players, and they all generally seem pretty happy. It's rough because I also want to play Final Fantasy XIV because it has an expansion coming up even sooner with Dawn Trail. Yeah. So I, that's why I'm glad it looks like the rest of the year might be a little slower because I kind of just want to play these MMOs a lot. Dude, this is year of the RPG, man. Yeah. I'm so happy. There's so many that have come out between Like a Dragon and Persona and Unicorn Overlord, Dragon's Dogma. We got the MMO expansions. It's just a good time to be an RPG fan, man. And I started Unicorn Overlord a hey. uh, couple hours into that. So far, I really like it. It's, nice. of course, beautiful. All mm -hmm. VanillaWare games are. but And I oh, just yeah. I love the way that these games look. I love that it is a lot like Fire Emblem, but different, right? It is a different combat system, so it feels a bit fresh. Right. 
in, in, in unlike Fire Emblem, and I kind of appreciate this about this game, not that I dislike silly games, and there have been some very silly games lately, this game is taking itself as seriously as a heart attack, right? Oh, it does. It, right? does. it I, does. I personally think to its detriment a little I bit. could see that. I could see how that could be a sticking point for some people, but at least at a couple hours in, and maybe by hour 10 or 20 or 30, it'll become overbearing. But at least right now, I'm kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this is uh, being played dead seriously. There's no, like, cheap jokes. Mm-hmm. There's, you know... Uh, there's a little fan service, I'll say, mostly with the jiggle physics. But oh, uh, yeah, and I bet there will you be more. Seen half of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm playing on Switch, and it looks very good okay. on Switch. It's a very yeah, nice Switch game. That's what I'm playing on too. Uh, yeah. I mentioned this on the Bombcast. I've temporarily shelved it while I play some art stuff. But uh, yeah, I definitely plan to go back because even if it's so, where I come from is, I think it's a bit busy. Is what uh, the conclusion I came to where. Not in that it has too much going on, but it's drawing from so many different places that I think it um, I think it struggles a little bit to have an identity of what it's trying to be. Uh, I saw some other people talking about it and saying the same thing. It feels a little unfocused, but it is unique, and I'll give it points for that. I think maybe if I keep going, the tactics will just click more into place, because as I kept playing... Uh, I did like the tactics more and more. I did like the story less and less because mm. it is so just MacGuffin driven. Sure. Which, yeah, I, I can understand why um, Jeff is in a spot where he's in kind of like you guys did with uh, Fire Emblem Engage where, hey, the story isn't great. And so yeah. maybe I'm skipping elements of it. But the combat, the combat's real good. So It feels yeah. really it, it, so much of it is that kind of um gambit based thing where if so, then do this. And Final Fantasy yeah. 12 was a formulative game for me. So I am always into that kind of uh, kind of system. Yeah, I'm curious to see what I'll think about after I spent a good amount of time. I can't believe how generous the demo is. Because again, I played for like a couple hours and it's like, you could still play for four hours. It's like, yeah. man, okay, It's a thanks. big demo. Thanks, I guess. Are you sure? Like, I'm good. <laughs> I know if I like this game or not now. You could make me buy it right now, but yeah, I'll keep playing for free, I guess. It's kind of like Square Enix. They give you a big demo of a long RPG, I guess. Yeah. So, hey, can't complain there. Uh, but I don't know. How about you? What have you been playing? <clears throat> Mike? No, oh, no. I've been playing games I can't talk about yet. <gasps> Whoa, look at you. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I get to say the thing. Wow. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, in, in case people don't pay attention to the Bombcast, then I'll give you something. Uh, with I've been playing Helldivers 2 with friends that's uh, gone into the weekly rotation alongside our Tekken 8 sessions and everything. Uh, Hell Divers 2 is just fun, man. It's super fun. Just, like, dumb fun a lot of the time, too. And I, I love that uh, you you ha- you ha- kind of just have to figure things out sometimes. And once you do and certain things click, like I mentioned, um, having to figure out that you need to use the Hell Bomb, a stratagem right. that is situational in order to blow up a uh, objective that is uh, demolitions-based. I think that's really fun. I think that's cool. And when just the emergent gameplay of... Uh, <laughs> I, this is still one of my favorites is me and my friends walk along and I say, wait, is that mine? And then it blows up my friend because he didn't see it. And oh God, the, the the natural humor mixed with the uh, over the top, you know, for liberty, for democracy. Like it, It's very it's fun. fun. It's, it's very fun. every time I play it, I have a great time. I really want to play even more of it. And I kind of have to maybe get that going with with my brothers really established like Monday night as Hell Divers night. The nice thing is that it's not like the game's going anywhere. It's st- it hasn't fizzled out like, you know, like, like, you know, Power World and the finals kind of felt like flavors of the week a little bit. Helldiver mm-hmm. seems like it's going to have a much longer uh, tail than that. Yeah. So Helldiver is too. Great game. Great game. Uh, and then <laughs> I mentioned my little project of uh, Red Viper, the virtual boy emulator. On right. PS. Just a cool concept. I, I love Jealous. that. Uh, I love that fans are doing this and bringing back old weird systems in fun new ways. We had uh, our Zet a little bit earlier this year, bringing back the CDI feel, but without a significantly better playing game. And then you had this where the virtual boy was just a huge failure. Uh, easily Nintendo's worst system. And the fact that someone would go out of their way to preserve that experience. And it works really nicely on 3DS. Once you know it, you know, just... 
that 3D experience, the, you know, looking through the goggles of a virtual boy translates super well to that 3D screen. I have a new 3DS XL, so with the eye tracking and everything, it just works perfectly. I was playing, uh, even last night, I even played a little bit more uh, Wario Land virtual boy. Just a fun time. And yeah. uh, most of those games are bad, but, you know, I have a couple of games I can tinker with a little bit. It scratches like the techie itch in me alongside having something new to play. So that's been a fun little project. It, it makes me want to, like, dig up my hacked uh, 3DS and, and do more mm-hmm. with it. Problem is, like, it's like, whoa, now I'm playing Unicorn Overlord. So that's like the next <laughs> couple months of nighttime game time spoken for. But, yeah. you know, you know, I was spoiled. I had a, I had a virtual boy, so I have affinity for it. Fair. I I don't know what happened to it. Uh, like most things, I eventually will find again in some box or something. I have not yeah. seen the Virtual Boy in probably thirty years now, so my parents must have mm-hmm. just got rid of that at some point. Probably saw a news story about it giving people eye cancer or whatever. Yeah, the the blinding red, which by the way is a cool feature of Red Viper. Everyone is that you can change the color from red to anything else on the RGB spectrum you want. Oh, so- you hear that? You hear that bucket, Sean? We can make it green. Bucket yeah, John, yeah, we bucket can make John. it green. Let's how, go, Bucket John! Yeah. How excited are we gonna be when we see the first Persona Three thing? And is that freaking green? And there, there, yeah, there is the green. The the what four two two three three five one six. I'm just gonna yeah. be popping off, do, man. It's gonna be great. Do you, real quick here at the at the end for Persona sure. Six? Do you want do you, college instead of high school? And do you think it'll be college instead of high school? Okay, I want college because. First of all, there's elements of Persona <laughs> that fly in Japan where that game is made for late teens that are weird when it's an M-rated game. You want to feel more way. comfortable about dating the girls in the game. I, I want to feel a little more comfy with that. Yeah, that would be cool. Also, just, you know, if they're going to play up a fan service scene or something. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm, yeah. Yeah, it yeah, it I just agree. doesn't translate as well. Um, but also just, you know, playing uh, Infinite Wealth and having adults deal with adult issues as much as you can when you're dealing with, you know, a crime drama. Yeah, I I would like to see some slightly more mature stuff come up. And, you know, having, say, uh, two people who are exes or something navigate working together or something. That's that's the kind of thing that you don't get as much in Persona, but can be really cool if you have something more like a college setting or something. So right. Especially, yeah, like, I would like it for it to be that. Especially playing Persona 3 again, and like, you know, you're in a literal dorm Right. Yes. Which, like, again, in a U.S. perspective, that's something we associate more of college, anyways. It's like, yeah, yeah, like I like that vibe. You know, just have the classes be, you know, more college classes and, and some of that stuff. It's fine. Yeah. So I, I mean, wanna... I'm almost a little surprised that they, I because I guess Ken is the one thing that like strays away from. They could have localized that in the U.S. It's just yeah, this is a college. They like, and just it just said... wouldn't have been weird. Yeah. Um. Now, but do I, I, I want it think too. it will be? Do I think it will be is a different story right. and probably not because they they still make those games for Japan. And plus, I mean, they could go wildly different and they could try to go global. That's what Sega as a company is trying to do. And as we mentioned, you know, they they own Atlas. And even if Atlas is pretty independent, they can't do their own thing, whatever. Maybe to reach a more global market. Yeah, they do mix it up. But I do think that uh, the the teenage centric storylines and everything are still so popular. And again, I found this out relatively recently. The game is rated a little bit lower in Japan. So that's why it is, you know, it's for teenagers specifically rather than adults, which, you know, slapped with the M rating here. It's a little bit different. So I think. I, I think they will still do a high school story, but yeah, it'd be cool to see something else. Uh, yeah, I even, agree. even they tried it with uh, Soul Hackers, which I, I never got around to playing Soul Hackers too because it came out a bad time for me with whatever I was playing. I don't remember it kind of got what. middling reviews too. I was just, it felt yeah. like something I didn't need to play. Yeah, so I just didn't feel the need to dive into it right away. But I, that also dealt with, you know, adults doing adult stuff. So yeah, who it knows? Nice. We'll see. I mean, that's, I think that's the appeal with uh, like a dragon for a lot of people, right? It is. Yeah, it's definitely. Adult. But it seems, yeah. it's weird oh. how like, College specifically, yeah. I feel like I don't see a whole lot of like people in yeah. college in Japanese media. Maybe I, I'm not seeing the they, right things. They do do things a little bit differently uh, there. And also like ages are a little bit different. Uh, sure. the, 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 yeah, I, I can tell you so much about that. But yeah, the, it's just viewed a little bit differently rather than us. Just, you know, yeah. uh, you, you go directly into college, like your state college. And it's almost treated like public schooling and everything yeah things are seeing a little different there with uh, entrance exams and whatnot so that that like that's why you heard like mitsuru and akihiko talking about so much in three and whatnot right right they uh, had like 
big like test to take him for a while. Yeah, I don't know. exactly. Uh, w- before we go, I, I uh, just super quick looping back to the 3DS thing, Mike, I wanted to let you know. 3DS, uh, like downloading stuff on 3DS has become so easy nowadays. Oh, yeah. I don't mean the Jeff Grubb method of downloading things to your 3DS. Um, from the file manager app, you can now just like scan QR codes. And there is a program called Universal Updater where they just basically made a homebrew shop where just everyone dumps mm-hmm. all their homebrew applications in there. So you can just fire up this homebrew shop and download stuff like Red Viper and just, you know, have all these fun little fan products to mess around with so if you ever want to dig out the 3ds out of the drawer it's very okay. easy to work with now yeah i really do so you know funny like what i really want to do is play like between worlds again honestly but there's so it's much a game there's so much it's i want to do my 3ds game. all right we got a couple super chats uh here we have to read before we all get right. out of here Darachi, this is uh about our mount rushmore says yes mike you do need to play yakuza zero yeah <laughs> I'll make that happen eventually. And then uh, at least that, try it. Right. I'm sure I'll like it. Uh, then yeah. that boy, Jerry says, you didn't mention burning Rangers even once. Hey, look, if it was <laughs> the Mount Rushmore of uh, songs from Sega games, especially lyrical songs from Sega games, then uh, that burning Rangers song has no business being so good with that. Yep. Rid- ridiculous saxophone solo sitting Holy shoulder crap. to shoulder with uh with daytona right there right well in <laughs> japan it's the same vocalist but the english oh. version is actually very good i actually prefer that version so nice uh oh Dorothy said they should set persona six in ohio you know uh this is stupid but <laughs> when i was like a kid when i was younger before persona 5 came out i like imagined it would the big twist would be that it was set in the usa and it would be like persona usa but the S would be a five, huh? Oh, like U five A. I don't know why. Lord. I always visioned it like that. Like that's what they're gonna do. Absolutely. Yeah, of course, that's not what they did. But like, it, no. might, <laughs> it made sense to me for some reason. I think I just thought it was really clever. The U five A thing, which it's not mm-hmm. that clever. Sean, thank you Mike. so much. That was a ton of fun. Really appreciate yeah. you stepping in, covering for Jeff, looking out for the uh, kiddos. It was good stuff. Of course. Yeah, always, always fun when I get to fill in for one of you guys. Always happy to do it. All right, I'm going to start playing the music here, which you won't hear. But uh, any anything you think people should check out, Sean? I mean, this speaks for you, me, and Jeff. You know, go check out our, our stuff during the day over at Giant Bomb. We're doing some fun stuff there. We got more content warning coming up tomorrow on Unprofessional Friday. So that's going to be fun. We're going to try to get in as many people as possible. So you might see me, Jeff, and Mike all in there. Uh, might have to do some modding or something and try to figure out a bigger player count. But yeah, and then we're uh, all three of us were on the Bombcast this week too. So go check those out if you like what we're doing over here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, please make sure you check out the new voicemail dump truck with Chef Reactions. Yes. Uh, that was a real good time. Chef that Reactions so just funny, learning so about uh, uh, my shenanigans, but mostly Dan's shenanigans was incredible yeah if, if you're if you're a game sp who doesn't watch the giant bomb stuff we do all the time i the one thing you need to watch from this week is mike on voicemail dump truck that was just so funny him and dan explaining weird food takes those pro- former professional chef awesome it was incredible uh but then though are you on anything tomorrow uh well like, like i said the content warning uh uh upf is uh, gonna be a big thing here yeah Okay, content warning. Maybe, UPF. Maybe. We'll maybe. see. We'll see what we can work out here. Me and Jeff are supposed to get that set up tonight, so we'll, do- we'll see what happens. They're doing bombcast instead of bomb uh, instead of revengeance tomorrow, right? Giant bo- uh, power bombcast. I mean. Power bombcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bombcast is not descriptive talk. enough. <laughs> we already do a bomb. <laughs> there are too many of them over there. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. So I think yeah, I think that's that's happening, and they'll, they'll you know they'll, they'll talk about their wrestling and all that stuff. Are you watching any more wrestling now that you're surrounded by so many wrestling fuckas? I might want. I might start watching Stardom because Dan Turner. Oh, oh so, yeah, you become the Stardom correspondent. <sighs> <laughs> it's on brand, right? Oh, yeah. Shoot, there you oh, go. shoot brother. Yeah, for sure. For I've never seen a second of Stardom. I used to be a New Japan guy, and I kind of missed that mm. for myself because it did make me feel pretentious, and I kind of enjoyed that. Like, like watching just AEW is not all that pretentious anymore. Uh, all right, thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate. It. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.